I believe, obviously, where God became human, where God became like the life that he created on this planet. But there's life out there, and there are mighty angels. We've, the Bible tells us about ruling the archangels and the like. The Bible tells us about rank and order. So there are probably certain angels, uh, mighty created beings. God has given authority over that part of the universe. And there were times when these angels had to come in. They're called sons of God because they were created by God. They, they had to come in and give an account to God. Like a wealthy man might have a lot of different companies and owners. And maybe once a year or however often those managers and CEOs have to come in and give an account to the big boss. Okay, And that's what it's talking about here. So... These angels, good or evil, came to the throne room of God to give an accounting of their actions. And the Bible said that Satan was among them. Because Satan is also considered a high-ranking angel. The problem with Satan was he thought, he thought he was so wonderful, which he was. He thought he was so bright, which he was and still is. He's a genius. And all the power that God had given him to him, he said, you know what? I'm as good as God. I can do that stuff God does. He was apparently allowed to walk into the throne room of God. And who knows the things he overheard. And we don't know for how long he was able to do that. Because there was no time. If we were to put time in there, it may have been uh, like some songwriters say, a million years. We don't know. So he was intelligent. He had a lot of experience, had a lot of knowledge, and he had power. But he had fallen because he thought he was like God and God would not allow that. So he would come in among them. And he had to give an accounting. Interesting. What was he in charge of that he had given an accounting? We'll leave that for another day because there's a lot of speculation in that part of it. We just want to stick with what the Bible clearly says. So Satan said, well, I, I, uh, he said that he was going to and fro on the earth. Oh, the earth. So apparently he had some authority in the earth. And we know that he did when he tempted uh, Adam and Eve and, uh, and they sinned. Uh, remember later when he tempted Jesus he says if you bow down and worship me see all these kingdoms he says they're mine I'll give them to you so he had authority in the earth so he, he's appearing before God in the courtroom of God in the throne room I don't know where something some big place in heaven and, and, uh, and he had to give an account of what he was doing well I've been walking to and fro on the earth in the book of Peter First Peter I think it's 5.8 it says that the that the devil is like a it's like a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. That's what he does. He looks and sees. He looks just like you watch those nature films in the, in, in, in the African uh, desert, and you see those lions walking around. They're looking for game. They're looking some some somebody that's alone or weak, so that they can attack and devour them. So the Bible gives us that picture. That's what Satan does. And we know Satan has an army of demons. Okay, to do his bidding. So all that stuff in the spirit world is walking all around the place. So he says, yeah, I've been walking around, and uh, that's in verse 7. I want to make sure that I, uh, the Lord said to Satan in verse 7, from where do you come? Of course, God knew it. He wanted to see what he would say. So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking back and forth on it. Well, he's always on the prowl. He doesn't take days off. He doesn't get tired. He doesn't call in sick. He's out there doing his job. And his job is mischief. Yes. His job is evil. He's evil personified. So, God, it's interesting what's going on here. I mean, wow. What insight. Nobody else has this kind of insight. We see it in the book of Job. So, he's having this conversation with uh, God, with this created being who thought he was just as powerful as God, but had been put in his place. And God still hadn't condemned him to the lake of fire. He's going to be, one day, the Bible says he's going to be cast alive into the lake of fire for eternal punishment. So, we, got, we have this scene somewhere in heaven, I guess. Somewhere in, in, in the courts of heaven or in the throne room of God. And uh, God says to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? And it's interesting, uh, consider, uh, not some, some translators say that means, well, have you set your eye on my servant Job? Another one said, well, have you considered him? So, yeah, Satan knew who Job was. He'd been trying to figure out, how can I get to this guy? So Satan accuses Job before God. What nerve? 
He's in the throne room of the Almighty God that knows everything, and he begins to accuse someone that God loves. You know, he accuses you today, right? Yep. The Bible says Jesus is making intercession. He ever lives to make intercession for us. So we have here Satan already accusing Job before God. And he rightly said that God had placed a hedge of protection around Job. Very true. See, the devil's smart. The devil knew that, that God had protected Job. I don't know if he put a force field. I don't know if he put a, a, a field of angels around. I don't know, but God was supernaturally protecting Job. Is that, uh, is that uh, my... Is that my equipment? It could be that angel I'm talking about doesn't like it. <laughs> anyway, if anything happens, I'll just change mics. But, did that happen last week? No. no. See, they like Brother Mark. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. I, I heard that message. It was a blessing. Thank you. Anyway, getting back to Satan here. So he's accusing, he's the accuser of the brethren. He's already accusing Job. So this is what we see going on, and God was protecting Job. Now, Job had enjoyed success, great success in his life, okay? He was what some people would, be, would call a winner. You know, nowadays, uh, a lot of guys, especially the user-friendly crowd, has talked a lot about, uh, if you want to be a winner, get my book, How to Be a Winner. So the winners and losers, he was considered a winner. But one day, Job began to lose in life. And he didn't know why. Everything was going great. He was teacher's pet, as it were. Satan hated him but couldn't touch him. He was the richest man in that part of the world. He had servants. He had everything. He had ten kids. They were well off. They were rich. Everything was good. And then one day, bam, out of the blue. Has that ever happened to you? Everything was fine. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, bam. I talk to people, as I've said, like that. Pastor, why has this happened to me? Why am I going through this? I'm talking about believers. They would, what's going on to me? So he, he, he lost some things in life. So there are three things that Job lost that the Bible tells us. The first thing that he lost was his wealth. Pastor Miego, would you read, please? This is chapter 1, verse 12. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power. Only do not lay a hand on his person. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord. Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them when the Sabians raided them and took them away. Indeed, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven and turned and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them and I alone have escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, the Chaldeans formed three bands, raided the camels and took them away, yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. So everything that Job had, everything that he worked for, all of a sudden, poof, disappeared. You talk about shock. So, obviously he was desperate and he was in trouble, to say the least. What a shock, I mean. He had much, so to, to lose that much all at once. Just, just think of it. So, he lost his wealth. We said that he was a winner. All of a sudden, he began to lose. Second thing that he lost was his family. Pass me a read, please. And starting verse 18, while he was still speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness 
and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are dead, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Then Job arose, tore his robe, and shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshipped, and he said, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin, nor charge God with wrong. So imagine what calamities. He lost his wealth richest man in that part of the world. Then all of a sudden, he lost his family. <laughs> Although he still had his wife and some friends, he felt all alone, to say the least. Just imagine, just try to imagine the emotional part of this. I think the average person would have a heart attack. This is just too much to take. It had to be the Lord giving them the strength. Uh, it, it's just too much to take. So. The feeling, what he was going through, it had to be overwhelming. And yet, to show you the kind of man that he was, in all that, he did not sin nor charge God with wrong. <laughs> I've talked to people over the years that didn't know what else to do, that have blamed God. I talked to a preacher one time that was going through something, and he, and he blamed God. Not because he's evil, because he, he's a bad guy. He just didn't know what else to do. He didn't know what else. He had no other answer. Since God has the power to do something, since God has the power to deliver, to heal, to, 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 to do whatever it is that I need, and he doesn't do it, therefore it must be God's fault. Job didn't do that. That had to warm the heart of God. But Job, does, the, the third thing that he lost, he lost his health. Think about that. He lost his health. Read, please. Chapter, <clears throat> Chapter 2. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? So Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil? And still he holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him, to destroy him without cause. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yes, all that a man has he will give for his life. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he is in your hand, but spare his life. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And he took for himself a potsherd with which to scrape himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. Wow. And if you look at that, those boils, think of a piece of pottery that you break and you just use it to scrape those boils. When you read about it a little bit, what doctors seem to think that it was, it's horrible stuff. And yet, look at the way God talks about him. God says, you, 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 you incited me to do this without a cause. There was no cause that was just justifiable for this to happen to Job. Yet it did. So we can... We can see some lessons here. So Job lost his wealth, his family, and his health. Now what about Job's friends? Job was soon disappointed in his friends. They were insensitive and heartless toward him. 
Why? Because they believe that suffering is due to sin, and Job must have been guilty of doing something. <laughs> oh, my God. Sometimes you go to a friend, you know, you, you need encouragement, you need strengthening, and uh, well, you must have done something wrong. And this is what happens too often times when a preacher, so-called, uh, is accused of something. And too many people, especially the brethren, oh, they must have done. Why do we always want to believe the bad report? It, it could be true, but what if it was us? Do we want, do we want people to jump at that, I, you, know, you must have done something? No. When it's your friends, you want people to, to think better of you than that. And then let it be proven that, 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 you know, that you did something wrong. So, and if you read the book of Job, it's fascinating. His, these people were bright. Uh, the way they could reason, the way they could speak. And uh, they, they just came after Job. He was down and they had him surrounded pretty much. And they were just coming against him. Yeah, Job, you're not as you're not the hot shot that you thought, huh? Yeah, you uh, you're not that close to the Lord after all, huh? Yeah. 